In this video, we are going to learn about Green's theorem, which defines a relationship between a line integral around a simple closed curve C and a double integral over the plane region D bounded by C. So Green's theorem is going to connect line integrals of vector fields with double integrals. As far as the relationship between the curve C and the region D, take the xy plane and draw any closed curve in the plane. So that's C. Then the region that we closed in, that's the interior region, which we define as D. The other thing we need is a direction for the curve C. Remember in a vector field, direction matters. So we're going to define the direction to be counterclockwise for this particular curve, so that if we were walking along the curve, the interior would stay on our left. And we have a way to define that. We say a curve has positive orientation if it is traversed so that the interior region is always on the left. This means we traverse the curve in a counterclockwise direction. Now one last piece here is notational and oftentimes you're going to see the curve C denoted in terms of D and that notation is really just saying that the curve is the boundary of the region D. So just a different perspective, we're still talking about the same curve, but the notation is going to be different. Right? So we want a closed curve that has an interior region. We want it to have positive orientation. So in this case, moving in the counterclockwise direction. Now before we get to Green's theorem, let's look at evaluating the line integral of a vector field over a closed curve directly to refresh our memory what that looks like. So evaluate the integral along c of x dx plus x squared y dy, where c is the simple closed curve defined by y equals x squared from 0, 0 to 1, 1, and y equals x from 1, 1 to 0, 0. So remember, this is the differential form of the line integral of a vector field. We do have a closed curve if we draw it out on the xy plane. So we have part of the parabola from 0, 0 to 1, 1 and then back to zero, zero along y equals x, so that's our curve. We are going in the counterclockwise direction. We're not doing Green's theorem yet, but just something to make note of. Here, if we're going to do this directly, we need to go along both curves that make up C. So we'll have to integrate along C1, also integrate along C2. So the vector field pulling out from the differential form, that's going to be x, x squared, y. So along c1, if we're going to compute this directly, we need to parameterize the curve. So r of t would be t, t squared. t is bound from 0 to 1. Then we go r prime of t, which is 1, 2, t. Define the vector field in terms of t which is going to be t and then t to the fourth. So we're going to dot f in terms of t with r prime of t. So we get the integral from 0 to 1 of t plus 2t to the fifth dt. Now I'm going to save us some time and effort in the actual process of integration. This would give us 5 over 6. And of course, feel free to practice integrating with this example. Now we're going to go along C2, but I actually think it's going to be easier to parameterize the negation of C2, so going in the opposite direction. So that's going to be easier. We could do C2 from 1, 1 to 0, 0, but I think 0, 0 to 1, 1 will be easier. So parameterizing the curve, y equals x, that's just t and t. So 0 to 1 on our t bounds. Our prime of t is going to be 1, 1. Define the vector field in terms of t. So that's going to be t, t cubed. Take the dot product. So integral from 0 to 1 of t plus t cubed dt. And we need to negate that since we are going along the negation of C2. We need to negate the value of our line integral. So important not to forget that. 
and that's going to give us negative 3 over 4. So then the integral we're looking for along C, p dx plus q dy, just writing it in general terms, that's going to be 5 sixths minus 3 fourths, which is going to be 1 twelfth. So definitely possible to evaluate the line integral along a closed curve directly. But in this case, we had to do two separate line integrals. So hopefully Green's theorem gives us a more efficient way to answer the same problem. Now, what is Green's theorem? Let C be a simple, closed, and positively oriented piecewise smooth curve, and let D be the bounded region closed by C. So that's what we worked on in the first slide. If the vector field F with components P and Q is a vector field such that P and Q have continuous partial derivatives on an open region that contains D, then the line integral of the vector field, written in either form, differential form, or as the dot product, is going to be equal to the double integral over the region D of the partial of Q with respect to X minus the partial of P with respect to Y DA. So a couple things stand out here. First, we're adding an integral, but we are then integrating derivatives, right? partial derivatives here. So the fundamental theorem of calculus is in play. Right? That is definitely helping this theorem be true. Integral of a derivative, and that's how it would be equivalent to a single integral, in this case, a line integral. The other thing, those partial derivatives look familiar. Those are the same partials we checked when looking at a vector field and deciding if it was conservative or not. So we're already used to finding these two partials. Now we're setting it up in the form of a double integral to evaluate a line integral. Couple of extensions here. If C is a negatively oriented curve, simple, closed, piecewise, smooth curve, then the integral along c of f dot dr, that line integral, is equal to the negation of that double integral over the region d, partial of q with respect to x, minus the partial of p with respect to y, dA. So the same thing holds for the directional piece. Right? So if we're going to go in the opposite direction around a closed curve, we would negate the double integral that we're setting up under Green's theorem. And then the last piece dealing with conservative vector fields, if F is a conservative vector field on the region D and C is a simple closed curve, then Green's theorem confirms that the integral along C, C being a closed curve of F dot dr, is in fact zero. And that's since the requirement for a vector field to be conservative is that the partial of P with respect to Y was equal to the partial of q with respect to x. So that difference that we're integrating inside of the double integral would be zero if those two partials are equal. So it's nice that it does confirm a fact we stated for conservative vector fields with Green's theorem. Right? And if we didn't notice a vector field was conservative and we just started doing Green's theorem, we would get the answer we're supposed to. So let's go back to that first example and now use Green's theorem. So same region, we'll just draw it out quickly because we want to treat it as the region we're going to integrate over now. So there's our curve C, has positive orientation, so that's good to note. And there's the region inside D that we're going to integrate over. So first, let's find the partials. So in differential form, this is P, this is Q. So the partial of P with respect to Y is zero. Partial of Q with respect to X is 2XY. So that line integral by Green's theorem is equivalent to the double integral over the region D of 2XY minus zero DA. So now we have to decide if we want to set up the region as a type 1 or type 2 region. I think type 1 would make sense here. Either would work. So that means we're going from x squared to x. So that's our y bounds. And then 
x goes from 0 to 1. So we can integrate this example. So 0 to 1, then we would get xy squared from x squared to x dx. So integral from 0 to 1 of x cubed minus x to the fifth dx, which is 1 fourth x to the fourth minus 1 six x to the sixth. Evaluate that from 0 to 1. 1 fourth minus 1 six is 3 twelfths minus 2 twelfths, which is in fact 1 twelfth, which is the answer we got computing this directly. Green's theorem is definitely more efficient. We only had to solve one double integral as opposed to two separate line integrals. The region worked out nicely here to set up the bounds, and then we just relied on our knowledge of evaluating double integrals. Right, so that's the advantage of Green's theorem. Now let's look at a few special cases. So use Green's theorem to evaluate the line integral along C of 2xy plus arctangent of x dx plus x minus cosine y dy, where c consists of the arc of the parabola y equals 1 minus x squared from negative 1, 0 to 1, 0, and the line segment from 1, 0 to negative 1, 0. Okay, so first let's make sure we have a closed curve. Let's check the orientation. So negative 1 to 1. Intercept's going to be 1. So we're going from negative 1, 0 to 1, 0 along the parabolic arc. And then from 1, 0 back to negative 1, 0 with a line segment. So it is closed, but is important to note. So there's C, there's the region D. Okay, we have negative orientation here. So all that means for us is we're going to negate the double integral that we set up for Green's theorem. So now let's find our partials. So we have P and we have Q. So the partial of P with respect to Y is 2X. Partial of Q with respect to X is 1. And just to note that arctangent term, that cosine of Y term, that is something that's common with problems meant to be solved with Green's theorem, that if you try this directly, you would get some pretty messy integration uh, where Green's theorem gives us a much cleaner alternative. Okay, so we said the orientation is negative, so we're going to negate the double integral over the region D of 1 minus 2x over the region, so dA. So it's going to be negative double integral. I think type 1 works again here. So our bounds are going to go from 0 to 1 minus x squared. From negative 1 to 1, we're integrating 1 minus 2x dy dx, and here we're not going to go through the integration. It would be very similar to the last slide. Great example to practice with, but you would get negative 4 thirds. Okay, so that's going to be an example where the orientation was negative around the closed curve. Use Green's theorem to evaluate the line integral along C of x squared y cubed minus 9y dx plus x cubed y squared plus 5y dy, where C consists of the line segments from 0, 0 to 2, 2, and from 2, 2 to 0, 2. So first thing, let's check out our curve. Okay, so we're going from 0, 0 to 2, 2 with a line segment. And then from 2, 2 to 0, 2. So that's our curve. So the first thing to notice, it's not closed. Okay, and we can even write a note, not closed. So Green's theorem only works if we have a closed curve. So we have two options. We could either choose to do this directly along each part of the curve separately, or we can add a curve to make it a closed region. And that's what we're going to do here. So we can add what we'll call C1. We want to make sure the orientation is still in line with everything. Now we've closed off the region D. So now our approach is we're going to integrate, or the integral that we're looking for, along C, plus the integral along C1, the curve that we added, 
that's now equal to that double integral we get from Green's theorem. So solve Green's theorem, also evaluate the line integral along C1, and then we'll be able to find the original line integral that we were looking for. Right? So just to make note, we added this in. All right, so let's start with Green's theorem. So back up to the vector field, we have P, we have Q. So the partial of P with respect to Y is going to be 3x squared y squared minus 9. Partial of q with respect to x is going to be 3x squared y squared. And that's it. So we set up our double integral. We have positive orientation. We're going counterclockwise, so that's good. So double integral over the region d of 3x squared y squared minus 3x squared y squared minus 9 dA, but that's going to simplify nicely to just give us the double integral over the region D of 9 dA, which then we can take the 9 out of that double integral, get 1 dA, and if we recall, double integral of 1 is just area. We have a triangular region, so we can just compute the area with a formula, 1 half base times height. So 2 times 2 would be 4, half of that would be 2, so 9 times 2 is going to be 18. But now we have to integrate along the curve we added in, so along C1. Now again, I think parameterizing is going to be easier to integrate along negative C1, which is fine. We'll just negate our line integral, so along negative C1. So r of t, parameterizing that, is going to be x is 0, y is t, where t is bound from 0 to 2. You could have also went 2t, and t would be bound from 0 to 1. Our prime of t is 0, 1. The vector field in terms of t, well, there's that x squared part, but x is 0, so that's going to be 0 and then minus 9y, so negative 9t. And then we have x being 0 again, and then 5y, so 5t. So dotting those two together, we have the integral from 0 to 2 of 5t dt, which is going to be, and we have to negate it, almost forgot, right? We're going along negative c1, so negate, right, negative c1 negate our line integral, so negative 5 over 2t squared from 0 to 2, so that's going to be negative 10. Okay, so now we have the integral along c of p dx plus q dy, that's what we're looking for, minus 10 equals 18, right, based on that statement up above. So that means the integral we're looking for, just writing generally in terms of P and Q, is going to be 28. So the idea here is we can still use Green's theorem even if the piecewise curve is not closed by closing it off. It doesn't matter what curve you close it off with since we're going to integrate along that curve. So Pick the simplest curve that would close off the region. In this case, the line segment would do a nice job. Uh, could you get more complicated? You could, but remember your line integral will get complicated as well. So now we're going to shift our focus to regions that have a hole in them. So, so far the region D has been bounded by a single simple closed curve. Now suppose the region has a boundary composed of several simple closed curves, would Green's theorem still hold? And the answer is yes, and we can extend Green's theorem to these regions that have finitely many holes in them with a really clever approach. So take a region here, boundary curve, C is made up of both circles. So the region, the interior region, is that ring. 
We want positive orientation, so along the outside, we're moving counterclockwise, but along the inside, to keep the region on your left, we would change directions and go clockwise. So that's something to note when we have these uh, regions with holes in them. Along the hole, or the curve that defines the hole, we actually have to go clockwise to keep the region on our left. So now the idea is to split this region into two simply connected regions. So we'll split it right in half at the x-axis. Okay, so split in half. The upper half will be d1, the lower half will be d2. And we'll do Green's theorem on the upper half and the lower half and see if they can work out nicely together. So along the upper half, we have four boundary curves now. So we have along the outer circle, that's C1. And we go back across, call that C2. Along the inner circle, that's C3. And then back across, that's C4. Okay, so you can see that written here. I also use the boundary notation for the line integral. So the boundary of D1 is the line integral along C1, C2, C3, C4. And then the lower half of this ring, start here, we go back across. So now that's negative C4, since we're just going in the opposite direction. Then we're going around the lower half. So we'll call that C5. Then back across, so negative C2. And then along the bottom, which is C6. And you can see that expressed here sum of four line integrals. Now, the key to this is the fact that when we went across, we went across positive C2 and positive C4, but also negative C4 and negative C2. So if we were looking in our line integrals, the integral along C2 and the integral of negative along negative C2 would wind up canceling. Same thing with C4 and negative C4. And the four integrals that would be left C1, C3, C5, and C6, those curves make up the boundary curve C. So that's going to allow us the following. So we can express the integral along C of f dot dr as the sum of two line integrals, one being the boundary of d1, that's all the blue curves, the other being the boundary of d2, that's all the red curves, we can do Green's theorem on each of those regions because they are simply connected. There are no holes in the blue region or the red. So that's here, D1, D2, Green's theorem. And if we sum those two double integrals up, really what we get is the double integral over the whole region D, partial of Q with respect to X, minus partial of Q with respect to Y dA, and that's Green's theorem. So essentially we can skip all this middle part, and if we are given a region with a hole in it, we can still set up Green's theorem. That's the conclusion we want to take away from this slide. Again, really clever technique in cutting the region in half, where we're using the directional piece of the line integral to cancel out. So use Green's theorem to evaluate the integral along C of xy squared minus x squared y dx plus 3x squared y plus xy squared dy, where c is the positively oriented boundary of the region between the two circles, x squared plus y squared equals 1, and x squared plus y squared equals 9. So, same diagram. Our boundary curve is c. We want positive orientation, so around the outer circle, we're going counterclockwise. Around the inner circle, we are going clockwise. Interior region is d, radius one radius three. Okay, so Green's theorem, we have P, we have Q. So partial of P with respect to Y is going to be 2XY minus X squared. Partial of Q with respect to X is 6XY plus Y squared. So positive orientation, we're just going double integral over the region D of 6xy plus y squared minus 2xy, and then I'll just distribute here, so plus x squared, dA. So this is going to be the double integral over the region D of 4xy 
plus x squared plus y squared dA. Now looking at the interior region that we're trying to set up the double integral over, polar definitely makes the most sense here since it's a ring bound by circles. So we're going to convert this double integral to polar. So that's going to be the double integral from 1 to 3, 0 to 2 pi of 4 r squared cos theta sine theta. x squared plus y squared is r squared. And then r dr d theta. You could distribute, this would also be separable if you factored out the r squared. And if you integrate this out, you are going to get 40 pi. Again, another great example to practice with our integration skills, but this video, we're focused on Green's theorem. So the last thing that we can do with Green's theorem is to actually work backwards. So Green's theorem can also be used to find the area of the region D bounded by the curve C. So let's say we had a closed curve that was a unique shape that we didn't have the formula to find the area of. This is where Green's theorem could be useful. So if you recall, the double integral over a region D of 1dA is area. So if we carefully pick the components of the vector field so that the partials would give us a difference of 1, well then the double integral is 1dA, which is an area double integral, and then we can go back to the line integral. So we have some pretty standard choices here. So one choice would be p equals 0, q equals x. Partial of q with respect to x is 1. Partial of p with respect to y is 0. 1 minus 0 would be 1. Another choice would be p equals negative y, q equals 0. You could go through the same process. You're going to get 1 or p equals negative one-half y, q equals one-half x. Again, one-half minus negative one, going to be one. So these are the three standard choices we typically make for a vector field if we're trying to use this area approach. So then Green's theorem, right, integral along c of p dx plus q dy becomes a double integral over the region d, partial of q with respect to x minus partial of p with respect to y dA, which for any of these three choices of vector fields is the double integral over the region D of 1 dA, which is area. So essentially, if we want area, we're going to use the line integral where we are picking one of these vector fields. So we can evaluate the line integral to determine the area of D. So let's look at one example of this. There are plenty that you can find. Use Green's theorem to find the area of the loop formed by the curve R of T being T to the fourth minus T squared, T to the sixth minus T squared, where T is bound from zero to one. So basically we're looking right in there. That's our curve C. We're trying to find the area of that loop. Okay, so first we want to choose the vector field. So let's choose 0x. We can choose any of those three combinations, but let's choose 0x for this case. So then we have, let's go f of r of t first since we just wrote. So define the vector field in terms of t. So that's going to be 0 t to the fourth minus t squared. We also need r prime of t. So that's going to be 4t cubed minus 2t, 6t to the fifth minus 2t. We're going to dot those together. So integral from 0 to 1 of t to the fourth minus t squared times 6t to the fifth minus 2t dt. Since 0 times that other component would just be 0, you could distribute all that out. You would get integral from 0 to 1 of 6t to the 9th minus 2t to the 5th minus 6t to the 7th plus 2t cubed dt. 
do all your integration out, you're going to find the area to be 1 60th. So just a nice application of Green's theorem that's not necessarily as traditional. Really, we want to focus on evaluating line integrals over closed curves, but this area conversation is just a nice extension as well. Right, so that's Green's theorem relating a line integral vector field to a double integral. Practice with this concept, and I'll see you in the next video.